StreamFX is a must-have plugin for OBS. It's what I recommend to almost every new streamer. It adds a ton of new features that you don't get by default, like the ability to tilt your gameplay in 3D space, the ability to blur sources, drop shadows, just a ton of new features that can help you enhance the production value of your stream. So that's the good news. The bad news is that now you have to pay for it. The developer Zaymar has decided that all alphas and betas of StreamFX will now only be available on his Patreon. Now he's still going to allow you to download the stable releases for free. The problem with that is that the last stable release for StreamFX was released in February of last year, and that only works with OBS 27. We're on OBS 29 now. You know what? Even that version's gone now. So effectively, there's no version of StreamFX that you can download right now that will work with the current version of OBS. But you know what? I don't let that stop me. So I listed out all of the features of StreamFX that I think were important, and I scoured the internet, and I started making a list of as many free alternatives as I could. And today, I'm gonna share with you that list so you don't have to cry like a baby like I did. Let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that specializes in math and science. But don't think this is just another website with a ton of videos that are just gonna go in one ear and then out the other. Their focus is on highly engaging and interactive problem solving. You guys remember that brain training game for the DS where you have to solve all those fun little math problems? Might be aging myself a bit, but I freaking love that game. Brilliant takes that concept and then applies that to real world problems. So instead of just passively absorbing a lecture, they give you a fun problem solving exercise to work out with every single topic. For example, they have a course on how to code with Python and rather than just giving you a bunch of code that you have to copy and paste, they walk you through a bunch of different situations like what happens if you don't put any quotes here? And you can either answer the question or have the solution explained to you. That way you really get to understand what the code is doing and not just that it works. So if you wanna try it, everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, head on over to brilliant.org slash nutty and the first 200 of you will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. The blur filter is one of my favorite features of stream effects. It allows you to take any source that you want and blur it. If you're creative, you can use this for some really cool effects. Like on my stream, I made a copy of my gameplay source, applied a blur filter to that, then put that behind the gameplay source to create this really sleek and minimal stream design. There's a few ways that you could recreate this effect, but the best alternative that you're gonna find is an OBS plugin called Blur filter. This one is literally exactly the same as the blur filter that comes bundled with stream effects. Apparently some developer just ripped the code straight out of stream effects because stream effects is still open source and they packaged up the part that contains just the blur filter and then they packaged that up as a standalone OBS plugin. So because of that, it works identically to stream effects blur filter because it's, it's literally the same code. So you're gonna get all of the same settings. For the record, fully expect for this one to get taken down pretty soon. So once that does happen, I will find you another alternative and I'll make a second video and link it down below. The 3D transform filter that comes with stream effects is another incredibly popular filter. It allows you to take any source that you want, like your gameplay or your webcam, and tilt it in 3D space. I use this one on my just chatting scene, where I take my gameplay source and I shrink it down really small in the corner, but then I add this subtle little tilt to the gameplay so it looks like it's tilting towards me, and I think that looks really cool. I looked for a lot of alternatives for this. A lot of people suggested that I use the corner pin shader by Exeldro, which allows you to take the corners of any source that you want and then manipulate them, so you can sort of manipulate sources to look 3D, but, I wasn't really satisfied with that, so I asked Exeldro if it was possible for him to make an OBS plugin for this, and he said, yeah, I'll just put that at the bottom of my to-do list. Anyway, less than 24 hours later, he was like, I'm done, it's finished. He made a whole ass OBS plugin called 3D Effect, which offers a lot of the same functionality that the 3D Transform filter does. So you can zoom, rotate, tilt any source that you want. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one copy of the StreamFX 3D Transform filter, except it's free and you can get it now. 
Source Mirror is one of the most essential features of StreamFX. It allows you to take any source that you want and make an exact copy of it so that you can apply filters to that copy without affecting the original source. So for example, I could take my webcam and make a source mirror of it and then apply a black and white filter to that source mirror, but it's not going to apply that to my original camera source. For this feature, you could use an OBS plugin called Source Clone. This was also made by Exeldro. I feel like Exeldro just saved all of our asses. He's like, he's like, OBS Jesus. Source Clone works almost identically to Source Mirror, but it even adds some additional features, like you can omit the audio channel for the Source Clone so it doesn't appear in the audio mixer, and you can downscale the resolution of the clone to save some resources on your PC. The virtual green screen filter inside of StreamFX allows you to green screen your camera without a green screen, so long as you have an RTX graphics card. This was the easiest alternative to find because it's already built into OBS. You still need an RTX graphics card, of course, but as long as you install the NVIDIA Video Effects SDK, you will have access to this virtual green screen filter inside of OBS. And you should already have that SDK installed anyway because the one for stream effects also needs that. While you're at it, you should probably install the audio effects SDK and the AR effects SDK because both of these are going to enable some additional features for OBS as well, such as noise cancellation and auto framing for your camera, which we'll talk more about auto framing in a second. StreamFX allows you to apply things called shaders to any source that you want to create some really cool effects like this fisheye shader and this glass shader. The best alternative that I can find is the OBS shader filter plugin. I talked about this in one of my super old videos, but it's very similar to StreamFX's shaders feature. Unfortunately, the files are not intercompatible with each other, so the shaders for StreamFX don't work with the OBS shader filter plugin and vice versa. However, OBS shader filter still has a healthy list of shaders that you can use, so I'm, I'm sure you'll make use of it. The link to the plugin isn't available on the OBS forums anymore. I don't know why, but they took it down years ago, but it's still available on their GitHub. So I'll leave that linked down below. Everything will be linked down below. Okay, you, it's just, just you go find it there. So there's a filter in stream effects that's called signed distance field effects. Do I know what the f that means? Absolutely not. But what I can tell you is that it allows you to add drop shadows, glows, and outlines to any source that you want. I'm gonna be honest with you, I had a lot of trouble finding a good alternative for these features. The best solution that I could come up with is by using the OBS shader filter plugin that we just talked about. And there are a few shaders that you can use to recreate drop shadows, outlines, and glows. OBS shader filters will come with a bunch of example shaders. And one of the example shaders that it has is called drop shadow dot shader. This shader is all right for adding drop shadows, but there's not a lot of flexibility like you can't adjust the opacity of the drop shadows or the intensity, but it's better than nothing. You can, however, change the color of the drop shadow. And so if you change the color to white, then I guess this shader can also double up as an alternative for the outer glow feature. Now, if you wanna make outlines around your sources, for example, I've got a picture of Linus here and I wanted to make a white border around him. You can use the rounded rect two shader, which you'll have to download that. Again, that will be linked down below. But if you use that shader in conjunction with OBS shader filter, you can kind of achieve a outline effect if you set the corner radius to roughly 10 and then set the border thickness to whatever. It's not a great alternative, but hopefully that at least satisfies a few of you out there. The dynamic mask filter of stream effects is a very interesting filter. You may have heard me talk about masks before in a previous video. If you don't know what a mask is, pretend that you have this rectangle and I wanna cut out the shape of this face into this rectangle. Well, a mask is kind of like the cookie cutter that you use to cut out the shape. Look, I know probably none of you got that joke, but if you did get it, I promise it was really good.
Dynamic masks are pretty much the same thing, but dynamic. So instead of using a static image as our cookie cutter, you could use something like a whole video. To give you a more practical example of this, let's say I have a green screen of my camera and I wanna take that green screen camera and use that source to cut out the shape of a rectangle. That's basically what the dynamic mask filter allowed you to do. I had a hard time coming up with a good free alternative to the dynamic masks filter, but I worked it out with you guys on my Twitch stream and the solution that we came up with was to use the blending modes feature of OBS. It's a little involved, so I'll link you to the quick impromptu tutorial that I made over on the second YouTube channel, which you can check out up here. While you're there, you should subscribe to the Nutty VODs channel. Not only do I upload all of my Twitch streams there, but I also sometimes upload some unscripted, unprepared tutorials on stuff to do with OBS. So if you like what I do in this channel, but you want more content, then there you go. Auto framing is another one of those features in StreamFX that requires an RTX graphics card. It utilizes the tensor cores on your GPU to follow your face around as you move around on your camera. Let's just pretend that this is my footage and not someone else's that I found on YouTube, yay. Honestly, I could never get this one working anyway, but it doesn't matter because Nori Hero created an OBS plugin called OBS Face Tracker. And it's exactly what it says. It can zoom into your face and follow your face as you move it around in your camera. And this one is not only free, but doesn't require an RTX graphics card, so everyone can use it. It's got options for tracking just one face or a group of people's faces if you have multiple people in your stream. You can also change the tracking speed and how much it zooms into your face. So yeah, there's a lot of customization options here. The color grading filter was another great feature of stream effects, which, you know, as the name suggests, allows you to color grade just by using a filter directly in OBS. I'm gonna be honest, I don't have a great alternative for this. However, what you can do is you could create a LUT outside of OBS using something like DaVinci Resolve and then import it directly as a filter. And you don't need any OBS plugins to do this. OBS can just do that by default. It's a little more complex because you need an external program to make the LUT, but like, I don't know, what do you want me to do about it? I have a really old video showing you how you can create a LUT inside of Resolve and then import that into OBS, but for the love of God, don't use it, okay? It's a really bad video. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna link to a video from EposVox where he shows you how to properly create a LUT because he knows what he's doing and I don't, so I'm going to leech off him. But yeah, I think that should do it. There's still way more features of stream effects that I wasn't able to find alternatives for, but I think the list that I presented today should satisfy the needs of at least 90% of you. So if you know of any alternatives that I've missed, let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna support what I do, you can support me over on Patreon where I've released some of my own widgets that you guys can download, like this widget here. I don't know which widget I've decided to show on screen, but it's cool, you should look at it. Also, yes, I do realize the irony of me promoting my Patreon after I just made an alternatives video for someone else's Patreon. So like, it's gonna be real funny if someone makes a YouTube video of like free alternatives to Nutty's Patreon widgets. <laughs>